the 2012 May 20th annular eclipse. Its meaning, including the recently published discoveries, the murals, at Shultun in Guatemala from the Mayan culture. So this eclipse on May 20th is a very significant eclipse. There are very significant things happening this year in an astronomical and an astrological sense. And these are coming not only from the Western tra tradition, but also the Chinese tradition and others. So an annular eclipse is when the sun is eclipsed, but it appears as a ring. And this is also called a ring of fire eclipse. Now, the reason that the sun is going to appear as a ring is that the moon is at a close enough distance to the earth to not completely cover the disk of the sun as the eclipse occurs. So in order to interpret what does this mean, we have a couple of sources that we want to rely on. First, we want to rely on Carl Jung and Jungian, Jungian deep psychology related to the collective unconscious and the symbols that are universal throughout many cultures. This also ties into things like the uh, perennial philosophy, different symbology that we see that's common to Western and other traditions. Also, we need to, because uh, of the ties into Shultun and the path of this eclipse, we need to be very adept in the ability to interpret Mesoamerican iconography and symbols. And the premier book uh, is a book called Burning Water by Lorette Su Sujarn. And this book is filled with uh, basically unexpected wisdom. The first number of pages in the book, it seems like a, a traditional archaeological study until you get to where she tar starts talking about Quetzalcoatl. So we're going to rely on these sources plus other sources from the Chinese, Chinese and the Mayan culture and the Egyptian culture, as we'll see later. So let's back up and start the symbology, uh, the interpretation. So first we have the sun. What is the sun? If we consider the elements and the different states of matter, the sun is very much at a far end of the spectrum. Uh, it's very much away from a solid state. Now. At the same time, we need to consider what is the moon. The moon is way at the other end of the spectrum, uh, whereas the sun is continuously in inner and outer motion, continuously self-expressive. The moon is very solidified, and its expressiveness is more in its ability to reflect rather than to directly emanate light. And what do we have in between those two extremes on the spectrum of the manifestation of matter? We have us in the middle. We have the Earth. The Earth isn't too hot. It isn't too cold. Although it does have a solid crust, it has a very fluidic oceans, a very fluidic or movable atmosphere. Uh, it also has a very fluidic lava structure underneath the surface and we don't know it may or may not have a totally uh, solid iron core. So as we back up now again, what is the Sun? The Sun is taking a very generative, almost hyper-dimensional, beyond this dimension manifestation. The Sun has been considered as a representative or a symbol of God, of consciousness. So the Sun is representing consciousness. And the moon is representing the manifestation into matter. So when we have an annular eclipse like this, we're, we're looking at or witnessing or participating in a juxtaposition. The overlay or the joining, that's a very critical concept, the joining of the high states of consciousness with a physical manifestation. And the visual effect is this ring, the symbol of eternity, but it's, it's a form of consciousness that is meant to be observed by us and has a significant impact by us. So, when we witness this event, we also have some other features or other perspectives to bring in. 
One thing we have to keep in mind is that, not coincidentally, 2012 is the year of the metal dragon. Um, I know some people who have very uh, strong, uh, perhaps narrow views uh, about what a dragon is, that it's evil or whatever. Uh, these are religious biases, so uh, if your initial reaction is to think of a dragon as something that's not good, then I ask you to, to suspend that idea and to understand that in the Chinese culture, dragon represents energy. A dragon is energy in motion, and that's a crucial concept in order to understand the symbolism behind this eclipse. All right, so what does this eclipse and the path of this eclipse tell us? Well, it has to do with a prophecy. No one's sure where this originated from, uh, but it is in the Andean culture, prophecy of the eagle flying with the condor. And this is a state that has been manifesting energetically and the energies of the Americas joining together. So let's look at the path of this uh, eclipse and we'll come back to the eagle and the condor in a minute. In this diagram, you can see that the beginning of the eclipse on the left is in Asia and it's going to go across the Pacific and then it's going to come inbound into California and then it's going to move southeast from there and end up around Lubbock, Texas headed into Mexico. So here's another view again. We're starting from the left, the beginning of this eclipse is starting in China and if you look at this it's close enough that you could say this is starting around the area of Tibet. And this shadow from the eclipse, the sun backlighting the moon, this ring of light is going to move from the left, from Tibet, <clears throat> and it's going to move into the Americas. So one of the concepts that we want to introduce here is the idea of earth chakras. And along with earth chakras, there is also another understanding from metaphysical uh, thinkers and uh, different spiritual sources that the energy of the central anchoring point of consciousness or life on the planet in terms of a spiritual portal has been moving from Tibet into the Andes for quite a while. And in fact, if we look at Tibet here, nestled next to China, Tibet has been a spiritual center for a while. It is a nodal point on the planet. It's also called the roof of the world. And we know from Tibetan Buddhism and other deep traditions such as Bon and other long, long ancient traditions um, that Tibet has been a center on this nodal point for quite a while. Now the shift is along with this path of the shadow of the angular annular eclipse is coming and it's moving from Tibet, it's moving into the Americas. So if we look at the Andes and we look at the geography and the topography of this place, it's very interesting that just as Tibet was a high mountain area, so are the Andes. The Andes is this high mountain area. So symbolically, what does the path of this annular eclipse mean? It's indicating that there is energy that's moving from Tibet and it's moving into the Americas. And where does this eclipse shadow come onto the coast of the United States, of the Americas? Well, that's also important. Mount Shasta happens to be within the main part of the shadow. Mount Shasta is associated with being um, a hyperdimensional portal. Some people believe that it's an angelic area or that there's an ancient civilization that's living underneath the mountain, hyperdimensional situation, all these mystical ideas about Mount Shasta. Also, the Buddhists look at the characteristics of the mountain and declare it one of the sacred sites, one of the primary sacred sites on the planet. Then the path of this eclipse goes southeast from Mount Shasta, a very special place, 
and it crosses through the desert southwest and it crosses very near to the Hopi mesas. And the Hopi are one of the primary holders of energy on the planet. They're one of the primary priesthood lineages. Um, in their mythology, they have gone through multiple earth changes in the past and have been protected by the ant people and have gone under the ground and been brought up later when everything was okay. So it's very significant that the path of this goes uh, through the Hopi land. And then the path of this eclipse starts heading down through Texas and ends around Lubbock. We talked earlier about the joining of the energies of consciousness, representing the sun, and of the moon, representing manifestation. You have a similar set of energies when you go looking around Mexico that have to do with the perennial philosophy. And this has to do with joining the energies of the heavens and the earth. And this takes us right into a discussion of Shultun and what was manifested or uncovered there. So the way I look at these things is the discovery or the murals at Shultun were released just days before this eclipse path is going to occur. That implies symbolically that what is happening with the annular eclipse is related to the symbology and the message of Shultun. And what is that message? Uh, that message is, if we look at this primary central image of this kingly figure seated, we have to begin decoding his symbology. And his symbology, if you look, there's clearly a blue uh, feathered type adornment behind him. And there's a couple of curious things that are also behind him. On the ground, there's something that looks like a tail. He's also wearing around his loins uh, some fabric that appears to be perhaps a uh, jaguar or other uh, South or Central American predator or cat. And not coincidentally, these are all figures that have deep symbology related to the development of consciousness, the development of humanity on this planet and beyond. The immediate conclusions or association that you can make are related to the caduceus. This symbol represents the joining of the quote lower energies or the energies that ascend from the earth and rise to the descending energies from the heavens that come down as the winged grace, the angelic type energy and join in the heart of humankind. So the fact that the path of this eclipse is headed straight from Tibet through the Pacific, down through an angelic portal area around Shasta, through one of the main spiritual centers on the planet, pointing right into Mesoamerica, causes us to have to consider the appearance of Shultun as a message that's all connected to this event. And that message is that through many ancient cultures, this joining of the serpent and the wings to be the feathered serpent, the King Tut figure here with the Urius, the serpent and the condor, again a serpent and a winged figure in Mesoamerica, to the Mayans this is Kukul Khan, to the Aztecs this is Quetzalcoatl. This symbology is clearly unmistakably apparent in the mural of the king at Shultun. This is telling us that, first, this knowledge of the joining of these energies, this kind of enlightenment or spiritual yoga, was a cross-cultural concept that was known throughout the planet. 
that the ascension or the development of an enlightened merged humanity and when I say ascending I don't mean just floating up into the clouds I mean the joining just like the Sun and the moon joined together into the ring of light the joining of the energy from the earth and the joining of the energy from the heavens in the human being that this is a kingly a prized a sought after evolution or manifestation of consciousness through matter it's why we're here and this path of the eclipse is showing us that this movement of the energy that was prophesied from moving from Tibet into the Andes is going to trigger is going to support a wider stronger transformation of humanity of many more people now in an accelerating way to realize that they are both of the earth of the heavens they are the Christ children the beings who are the Quetzalcoatl who are the return and the manifestation of the balanced harmonic living breathing humans on this planet so this is a very important time on Sunday please spend some time in prayer spend some time on what brings you into a state of harmony what brings you into a state of beauty and what brings you into a state of love and an appreciation of life